G'day guys, I know it's been a long time coming but I thought it was finally time I did a walk around video of the Little Rig 2.0. Ever since I um, released the new look um, version of the Little Rig, I've had so many questions about everything, particularly the tyres, the offset, the suspension. Um, so this is a really good way to comprehensively go through all of those questions that you've been asking and hopefully, um, I guess, give you a really good rundown on everything that's been done to make this, uh, this rig as capable as it is off-road. Now keep in mind that this is an off-road vehicle for me. It's obviously, it's street legal, it's registered, but um, it's not driven as a daily driver. It's a weekend vehicle that I take off-road. So I have built it for that purpose. Um, this setup, although a lot of people, you might think it looks cool or you want this for your vehicle. I know so many people are particularly set about the tires and the offset. It won't suit you as a daily driver. I can tell you that now. It's not the best and most comfortable vehicle to drive around on the streets, but it is a weapon off-road. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy this little walk around. I hope I cover everything for you. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. And please remember to subscribe and like the video. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'll start. Okay, so I'll start with um, the most commonly asked features about the car at the moment, which is uh, wheels, tires, and suspension. These are Maxi's Razor Mud Terrain tires. They're fantastic off-road, um, but they are a predominantly off-road tire. So again, this, this probably isn't the right tire choice for you if most of your driving is on the road. They are 31 by 10.5 by 15 inch tires, and they're on a 15 by eight inch um, steel rim. I have a negative 25 offset on these rims. So I needed to bring the tire um, away from my arms inside there. So this actually um, widens my wheel track by 100 millimeters. Uh, so two inches either side of my flares. So. That's why I've had to extend my flares here because my tires now poke out two inches on either side of the vehicle past the um, width of the car. My suspension is a EFS suspension. It's a two inch or 50 millimeter suspension. It's quite a soft suspension. Um, I don't know of any other new Jimny's that have got an EFS suspension on, um, but I've had it for almost two years. I cannot fault it. It's been fantastic. Um, as you guys probably know, I, I've driven a lot of tub tracks and I've never had an issue with it whatsoever. Touch wood that stays that way. Um, so yeah, Maxis, Razor, Mud Terrains, 31 inch, two inch suspension and 15 by eight steelies with a negative 25 offset. That's the rundown on those components. Okay, so now let's focus on this bull bar because that has a lot of people stumped and again, so many questions about what's going on here because nobody can find this bull bar anywhere. And the reason is, it's simply the AFN looped bull bar. So it originally had loops. I've cut the loops off um, just to be unique, to be a bit different. Um, the idea actually came from um, one of my mates who I drive with all the time, Dalen. Um, he said, why don't you look at cutting your loops off? And the more I thought about it and did a few little Photoshop drawings, I actually loved it. I think it's quite aggressive, um, but more importantly, it's unique. There's no other ones like it. Um, so yeah, the way I did that is I used a grinder and a hacksaw, cut the loops off. I then um, fixed some metal plates over where the holes are on the outside of the um, bull bar here um, and painted it all up, put some caps in where the um, loops originally met the, the front here and it, it's come up really, really good. I love it. 
Um, I've just got some KC highlights, um, LED six inch spotties on there. And these are Steady Australia 13 and a half inch single row light bars. Um, the winch I'm running is a carbon off-road nine and a half thousand pound winch. Is that too much for the Jimny? Yeah, it's quite strong. Um, but having said that, and I'm not being cheeky here, I'm not usually recovering myself. Um, I'm very often helping other people out on the tracks that I've stumbled across. Again, in my other videos, you would have seen me um, recovering patrols, land cruisers, <laughs> jeeps, you name it. Um, the, the winch has come in really handy. So yeah, it might be too much just for the Jimny, but it's good to be able to help out the bigger rigs when you're off-road as well. Um, so that's it for the front of the car. Oh, and of course, sorry, I've got my um, GME UHF um, radio is installed as well. So that's just the antenna there. It comes with a longer antenna when if you're going way out, you know, outback Australia somewhere. Um, I mainly just use it to communicate with the people I'm driving with. Um, so that little antenna definitely does the trick for me. talk about the snorkel. Uh, the snorkel was made by Vogue Industries in Brisbane. Um, they did an absolutely fantastic job. So this was the first right hand snorkel they did for the new Jimny. So it was all custom made um, at the time. They've since put them into production so they're available to order for everybody. Um, so I know lots of people ask me where the snorkel come from and, and I always just direct you straight to the Vogue Industries page. You can email them and they'll give you all the pricing um waiting periods install costs all that kind of stuff so it's fantastic it's a three and a half inch um snorkel um powder coated obviously it's all plumbed in it's all working and um it gives a really good note so when you kind of hit those rev ranges you get that really nice rumble um which is a nice touch as well because obviously the jimneys are pretty quiet and i'm not one to get something super loud and and screaming at people as you drive past. But it's nice to have a nice low rumble um, once you get to some revs as you're driving along. So yeah, three and a half inch snorkel from Vogue Industries. Now here we have one of my absolute favorite things and that is the um, Bushtech gullwing windows and cupboards, uh, which I got through ozjimney.com. Absolutely brilliant. You know, on a vehicle that is pretty short for space and storage, as you all know, um, it's somewhere I can keep all my recovery gear. Um, I keep some tools in here as well. Um, spanners and uh, all that kind of stuff. On this side, I have one on the other side as well, which is, has first aid kit, toilet paper, um, you know, uh, some more recovery gear. So these gullwing windows, um, they're absolutely brilliant. They're, they're Pretty easy to install. Um, you may have seen my video on my channel already on how to install them, but um, absolutely sensational. You can lock them up. They've got um, yeah storage inside. They seal off well. You know they don't leak. Um, they're just really good. I absolutely love them. Um, you just can't beat storage on a Jimny. Um, so yeah, definitely check them out. They're from OzJimny.com. They're the Bushtech um, Gullwing windows, and you can also buy the cupboards for inside. You don't have to have the cupboard, you can just have the window open if you, I don't know, you want to reach through to a fridge or something like that. I just like the cupboards um, because, yeah, I use this for tools and recovery gear. some of you guys would kill me if I didn't go into detail this time about my drop-down table um, so what is it it's got all of really my camping gear or off-roading gear just stuck on here um, 
So basically I've got a couple of utility knives um, and, and tools. So just your general kind of pocket knives that have lots of different tools on them. I've got a few of those, uh, to be honest. Maybe, you know, three is probably overkill, but hey, um, better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. I've got my Storm Tire deflators here, ready to go. Uh, I've got a torch, machete, that's, you know, cut away a bit of undergrowth when you're on the heavily overgrown tracks if you need to. And I've got my axe here, which is um, obviously for, well, it's a bit multi-purpose. It's got a sort of hammer on it. It's got a fire starter on it. And you can chop up little bits of firewood and kindling if you need to as well. There's a torch up here. So what happens is you just undo these clips and now you've got your little drop down table ready to go. There's a torch up here. Um, so I can have a light on when I'm preparing food. And there's a little extendable light here as well, um, which you can use just to focus on, on things if you need to. That just retracts back in. And um, yeah, when, you know, when you finish using the table, just wipe it over. It's got this, um, you know, steel surface so it can stay nice and clean. Simply fold it up, clip it in, and away you go. Where did this come from? Well, this is homemade. How did I do that? It's pretty simple, guys. You couldn't go too wrong if you did it yourself. I took off the original plastic panel and I placed that on a bit of timber and traced the outline. And that's how I got my shape. Um, I then did mine, I added another layer of timber and cut out the section for this table. So you can see um, where it's concaved in there, where the table sits in. So I, I did that, then I carpeted everything, and then I just made the actual table, which is simply on a hinge, fits inside that gap that was made, and it has two bits of um, parachute cord there holding it. When it folds up, you simply use your clips, and it's good to go. It's not hard, I know lots of you um, have, have asked many times if I'll make you one. It may be something I'll consider down the track, but I just encourage you to give it a go. I know lots of my friends that I see regularly um, with Jimmy's, they have made them themselves and they look fantastic. So yeah, give it a go, you can't go too wrong. come inside now and have a look at um, the things that make this vehicle so capable off-road and why I'm often able to get up tracks that maybe other chimneys, other big rigs um, can't get up at this stage. So come on in and let's have a little look here. All right, so the main thing I'm going to show you is these two little switches down here. Excuse the dirt in the car, that's from last night. I went wheeling last night. So that's the front and the rear ARB air lockers. The lockers make an enormous difference. Yes, the new Jimny has a cool all grip traction control system, but the reality is, and you can argue this with me all you want, it will never ever compete with having lockers it it doesn't um it's proven and i could prove it to you time and time again on the tracks so twin locked front and rear lockers coupled with reduction gears i have 87 percent low range 17 percent high range reduction gears from pro track in greece the reduction gears and the twin lockers make this thing on the tracks very very capable you know, then we start talking about adding the big mud terrain tires, um, the suspension, the wider wheel track with the offset rims, zero weight up top anymore. Um, all of those things combine um, to make this a really good off-road vehicle. 
Um, the lockers are controlled by a built-in air compressor and that's the switch just down here. So ARB have installed the air compressor under my passenger seat. Um, I then underneath the driver's seat here have an outlet, sorry there, um, to inflate my tyres after I've been driving. So I can just hook the hose up, turn the air compressor on and away we go. I've also got a few little things. I've um, you know, got an off-road mapping system mounted there. I have little bits of storage, you know, that lots of people do that I've added in. Um, just to give me a little bit more storage. And I've got these 3D, again, I apologize for the dirt, but that's what happens when you go off-road. Um, these 3D floor mats, which are fantastic. Um, got them at the front and also in the back. If I can just show you they also run through along the back there but it's pretty full in the back here at the moment couple of the little controls so this switch here that's actually for my rock lights that i have under the car uh, i'll show you a bit of footage of those now And um, that's simply controlled by this switch here and I can put them on at any time whether the car is turned on or not. Um, that way if I'm camping or have a need to repair something on the car when I'm out on the tracks doing a night drive, I have lights ready to go without having to turn the car on. Um, I've then got my spotlights and front light bars connected in there as well. And I think that's about it really for switches is the UHF that I talked about as well. That's mounted on there. The box for the UHF is mounted underneath the center console. So that's all hidden away, the control unit. Let's walk around to the back. Now my spare tire, you'll notice I have mounted in the back. Why have I done that? The spare tire is in the back purely to bring the weight of that in over the rear axle a little lower down and not hanging off the back door because these Maxis Razor mud terrain tires, 31 inch, they are heavy. Combine that with the steel rim. They are much, much, much heavier than what was designed to go on that rear door. But I also like having that weight distribution straight over that rear axle. You will notice my travel oven as an essential part of my day-to-day -day driving kit. So this is from Kickass. It is powered simply um, in the 12 volt socket there in the back. And it is fantastic. Just chuck in something to cook when you wanna go for a drive and it'll cook on your way there or while you're driving around on the tracks. Um, and you got a nice hot meal ready to go. Highly recommend that. They're not expensive. They're just super easy to use, easy to clean. Um, so yeah, that's a fun bit of fun bit of gear that I've added in for days on the tracks. People I'm driving with love it as well because they always get some food out of it. I keep in the back here just an air jack, so an exhaust jack. That's a two-ton exhaust jack. And then I've just got some tools and, again, more recovery gear. One of the latest things I've added to the vehicle is the Wild Dog Rear Steel Bar um, from ozjimney.com also. Um, this is so cool. It's just built so tough. Uh, really good construction. It's simple and it's effective and I love it. Um, a couple of things I love is, is it has the built-in... Um, tow hitch it has the built-in recovery points so and trust me I've used them plenty to pull people out of mud um, to do snatches they are strong and um, it's just a really robust well-built bar and I couldn't be happier with it so yeah that's a wild dog steel rear bar and you can get that from ozjimney.com um, I've simply just added a couple of um, shackles, uh, which 
on that, always put a little cable tie on your shackles, guys, when you do them up. That way they can't come undone and bounce along the highway and p potentially cause an accident or kill someone um, or severely hurt someone. So, yeah, check out this steel rear bar. Very good investment. Um, yeah, you'll love it. Now I'll just focus on the wrap for a moment. See the bonnet has got a bit of a wrap on there. The roof is completely wrapped. And around the back has a wolf decal on it. They were all done by Dezuka and that's purely just for a bit of a change of look. To the vehicle. After I took the spare tire off the back, I thought it looked a little bit plain. So we've added the wolf decal, which just breaks it up and I think it is really cool. You'll see I've got a couple of bash plates um, secured under here. Now at the front is the AFN bash plate, which comes with the AFN bull bar and I've simply painted that red. And behind that is the new Bay House, B-E-I House bash plate um, available from ozjimney.com. That has copped an absolute hiding and by far one of the best investments you can make if you're looking to go off-road a lot. Um, the other added benefit of it is it protects your alternator from a bit of the mud splash when you go through mud puddles. puddles. So really worthwhile investment that Bay House bash plate from Oz Jimney. Um, a really, really good piece of protective equipment. Now my rock sliders, we have a look and you can see how much of a bashing they have copped. They are dented and scratched to buggery. They are from Jimny Bits and they're outstanding. Really solid. They've protected me to no end. They can be used as a little step, simply if you want to step up along this top bar. I'll just walk around the other side. But yeah, really neat. They don't take away your clearance like some of the other ones on the market. And um, I like them. I think they look neat. But more importantly, they're very, very solid and do what they are designed to do. The flare extensions that I've made here for the wheel arches, um, they are simply made from black garden edging from Bunnings, or for those overseas, just from your local hardware, it's black garden edging. Now I've secured that all the way along the underside of the wheel arches. Lots of screws, that's the key to keep it as strong as possible in there. And then I've simply finished it off neatly with a knife to make it look neat and uh, as professional as I could anyway. It doesn't look like garden edging, it, it looks semi-professional. More importantly, it does what is required and comes out to the width of the tires so that I'm not, um, you know, breaking those road rules with having my tyres extending out past the width of my flares. So yeah, black garden edging from your local hardware, and that'll do the trick, easy as.